Welcome to Broken Chains Church. God is alive and well and moving by His Spirit. Amen. So, glad to have you with us tonight. Bear with me, I'm resisting something tonight. I don't know what it is, but if I fall off the stool, I'm not drunk. My head is just spinning. Almost drug up one of the other chairs back there. Amen. So, Pastor Timmy, we get the offering. Plate, we're going to take the offering. I may believe that uh, God is a man of His Word. Amen. He can do it with some fish and some loaves. How I many you know he can? He can uh, do it tonight in our offering plate and make more than enough. So I'm reminded of a verse tonight that says, "He that begun a good work in you, he shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ." So if you're wondering if he's done with what he started in you, you'll just ask, has Jesus come back yet? And there you have your answer. Amen. And so, uh, we're going to take that. And uh, tonight we're going to be studying, honestly, it's one of my favorite verses in Proverbs. And either you'll love it or hate it because that's how God feels about it too. I meant to print off something else, but I've forgotten it. You have to, I, I designed it, but I didn't get printed before tonight. And uh, we're gonna, then we're going to spend some time in prayer for the fame unit and also for our church. We had some again that said they were sick tonight and weren't going to make it. And uh, you all are here tonight, but uh, how many of you know it's, you know, I came from a place where some people talked in metaphors. And I know some of you messaged me about that. That isn't what this is about. But how many of you know that this pastor has never been accused of talking indirectly? I'm a very direct person. Amen. And uh, I believe directness is the best way because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And if you got to guess what I'm saying, you're not real positive of whether or not it's true, do you? So I've never left anybody to doubt what I was saying. And so this is kind of funny, but it's kind of not, but it's kind of really my heart, so I'm kind of going to share it before I start teaching tonight. I told this, I believe it was Sister Becky, I, I told her this after church Sunday, and I didn't mean it any bad way, but you know, as pastors a lot of times, you know, you're human beings and you have to get your mind in the mind of Christ, you have to take authority. All the things I teach you all, guess what, I have to use those, I've never become I've never, I've never raised above those. If I was above those, I'd be in heaven. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, sometimes I get, the, you know, Facebook is a popular thing. Sometimes it's about to wear me out here lately because of just all the nonsense I go on. Because I want to, I have a relation with people all over the world. If I don't go on there, I don't get to see them, or I don't get to see you all. But just the nonsense of it is, is it to me anymore is almost just wearing me down. But. Uh, not, in the, not that I can't handle it. I just, I, how I handle it is I, don't, I choose not to be tuned in 24-7. <laughs> but that's between me and the Lord. Are you not feeling well, sis? Well, be healed in Jesus' name. I, I think there's several going, well, I don't know what this junk is. We're going to kick it to the curb, amen? And so, you say, what was you going to say, Pastor? Well, I'm going to preach to the choir tonight, but you know, some, I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of times I write all kinds of different posts, some good, some bad, some really deep, and then I'll about get to the send button and the Holy Ghost to have me really erase them. And there's some of them that don't even get out of my mind before the Holy Ghost has me erase them. <laughs> I mean, they don't even get, I only get to put pen to paper. And I wanted to post one the other day, and I just wanted to speak for all pastors, because I, I really tell you, almost everybody I know in the ministry right now is under the guns. I mean, there is an onslaught. And I wanted to say, you know, 
I'm going to be as faithful this week to, to the house of God, the things of God, as everybody in my congregation is. And I'm going to, I'm going to do, as, as I wanted to say, what if preachers acted like most of their congregants? How faithful would they be? How much prayer would get done? How much things would get taken place? How would they respond to people? Because somehow, because they are pastor, they, they think they have to, they, they, that you're not pastor, that think that, that allows you to act different than God required to pastor. And the thing is, God required the same thing out of all of us, just most pastors have yielded more along the way. Now, am I preaching anybody in here? No. But would that edify God? Would it, would it have been a correct way of correcting people? Probably not. If the Lord would have let me, I sure would have pushed it post. But he didn't even let that one get on the paper. I didn't even have to erase it. He just said, no, no, you're not putting that out there. I, and I understood why, because a lot of those same people aren't mature enough that they get offended over the least thing, let alone somebody explaining to them they need to get their heads and hearts right and start acting right. The Bible says, do unto others as you'd have done unto you. Now, what if pastors did unto others as they had done unto them? I want to say it again. I only had a, out of all the people here, I still lost a few of you, and I refuse to lose anybody tonight. What if pastors, as the Bible says, do unto others as you had done unto you? What if pastors done unto others as they had done unto them? It would look like a machine gun warfare went off in the church. There'd be there'd be offense bullets flying everywhere. Hot jabs, grabs. They'd be undermining, backstabbing. Now, am I saying everybody? No. But let's just be honest. Now, how can we change ourselves from being those people to the people God's called us to be? Well, I'm so glad you asked. We happen to be studying Proverbs chapter 6 tonight. <laughs> and he has a whole section in there. Does anybody in here want to be hated by God? Did you know that no matter how... I, I preached on God's love over and over and He does. There's nothing you can do to stop Him from loving you. But do you know there's things that God hates? There's one that's even an abomination to Him. There's actually a couple of things that are an abomination. One is homosexuality. And all those unclean things. And do you know I, most of those things don't enter into people instantly? They're the death of a thousand cuts, a death of starting to move their mortal line until that things overtake them. But if you just look here, like I was talking about the truth tonight, if these seven things, I'm here to tell you, tell you they'll keep you from all those things and they'll start making some traits in you that, that represent Jesus Christ. But they are not what most people today look like or act like. If I treated most of... Now listen, the enemy's real good at also twisting the truth. So you have to just... You can't go by how you feel or even well, by even by a lot of times what you think things look like. Because if I if I treated most people what, why, by what I think it looks like they're treating me instead of by how the Word God treats me, man, it'd be rough. The Bible says to have friends, you might, you have to show yourself friendly right so you know and God is a friend how many know he showed himself friendly what about if I, I say we can see that inside these verses where one of the things he hates is an unfriendly person and you know how you become unfriendly it's because you're only in it for you Friends is there to, 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 to looking out for everybody else. A friend is looking out for your well-being. They love you. They like to spend time with you. They like to hang out with you. And sometimes the hardest thing you have to do is look in the mirror and see if you're the kind of friend you'd want to have. And if you ain't got any, usually the answer is no. <laughs> well, that's awful rough, Pastor. Well, if it is, then praise God, because that means there's something you can do about it. You can apply the Word of God and change. Yes? Amen. 
Now tonight I messed up. I said I'm resisting some things. I, I've got your regular little sheets if you want that for your binder. I also have all the big sheets because I printed off just as many for me as I did you all. For, for you all, anyways, yeah. So, Pastor Tammy, if you'll pass these out, you can tell her which one you want. She'll hook you up. Now, I listed some things earlier, and I put them out for people to be reading. If you happen to uh, be on the church page or my page or any kind of internet whatsoever, if you're not, that's okay. You'll hear them now. But I listed some things that some will say, well, I don't know if that's scriptural, but we can look and see that it is definitely the fruit of the Spirit. And one of them, before I even read the verses, we're going to look at this tonight, if this will stay on. I need to change my timer Check it out. But it says, uh, the first one I listed is respect. Now, how many know the Word of God says for the wife to respect their husband? Now, how many know that res that means, now respect is usually given when somebody, when you feel someone deserves it. That's how most people in society feel. And you get to decide when that is. But how I many you know that's not the type of respect God is talking about? Are you with me? If I only respected people when I felt like they deserve it, I have to tell you, I wouldn't be giving out very much of it in this day and time. Big smile. I just wouldn't be giving out a lot of respect. But, how I many you know God says that we're, we're to give respect? And, but unfortunately, most of the time, we only give it if we feel like we got it ourselves. If you feel like somebody disrespected you, well, then you feel like, well, I ain't giving them no respect. You might not say that, but how many know the proof's in the pudding? The proof's in what you do and how you act. Right? Another one, this is going to drive me crazy. I got to figure it. Another one is honor. Now we've taught. If you've taken Bible school around here, you've heard a lot about honor. Now, are you supposed to honor just everyone, or just those that deserve it? For one, the Bible says give honor to the honor of those who are due. But the Bible also says we're to honor one another. Another trait is integrity. Now, if you don't know this by now, I happen to like integrity. I happen to think very highly of integrity. I happen to like not like to deal with people that aren't of integrity, and unfortunately, integrity is something either you have or you don't have. If you don't have these traits, you're going to have the opposite that we're going to study tonight. But before we looked at the negative, the things that God hates, I want you to look, you can almost say these are the things God loves. Because he's the opposite of what God hates. Amen? So God loves people that respect. He loves people that have, show honor. He loves people that have integrity. And now, integrity, does that mean you'll just do the best you can? Or does that mean you're going to keep your word to your own hurt? Keep your word to your own hurt, which is another verse. And it, it means that you can count on them. They're going to do what they said they're going to do, how they said they're going to do it. And even if it costs them, you'll never hear nothing about it. Amen? Compassion. This is also one of the, the opposite of one of the things that God hates. This is one of the things God loves is compassion. How I many you know that compassion doesn't always come easy? Sometimes it don't even come naturally. But compassion says you can look and you can put yourself in someone else's shoes no matter what they've done to deserve it. They may even have brought it on themselves and you can look and have compassion upon them. Amen? 
empathy is another one. It's kind of the same thing, but that means you can actually have feelings for where they're at. You may not, that doesn't mean you agree with them, that doesn't mean you're not going to help get them out of there, but that means you have empathy because it's really hard to pray for someone if you really don't give a rip about them. Come on. You know, the Bible says, bless them, or where's that in the scripture? The Bible says, bless them that persecute you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. I think that would fall into having also empathy and compassion for them, would it not? Now, I have to admit, when I first started practicing that verse, God bless, I was just grit, through gritted teeth, I'd be blessing somebody. Through gritted teeth, I'd be praying for somebody, and all of a sudden God said, that's not really enough. That's not really what I'm talking about. Come on. Another is love. You say, well, is that the same thing? Well, not really. See, love is unconditional, but in today's society, we've made love all about conditions. That's why the divorce rate is so high, because it's not a covenant. It's just a feeling, and feelings come and go. But commitment and covenant stay. Love is, and plus everybody's trying to say, well, you didn't meet my needs. You didn't meet what I described. Well, guess what, people? Uh, those needs and meets and things, they always change. But when you give something without any conditions at all, it can't change. Amen? And we can look at that at the, at the Word tonight. But we're just giving some traits opposite. Then we're going to study the, the six things that God hates and the seventh of those abomination to Him. Proverbs chapter 6, 16 through 19. Quick to forgive. How, you know, I could have just put unforgiveness here. I uh, could have just put forgiveness here. But I, I wanted to just go a little deeper than that. It's more than just about forgiving someone. Most, even a lot of good Christians eventually forgive someone. But if you hold any bitterness or resentment in your heart very long, it puts you in a delicate state with the Lord. Because He can't forgive you then. He can't walk in love with you. So not only does He need you to have a heart of forgiveness, He needs to be one that's quick to repent. That means that your heart is soft and pliable before the Holy Ghost so when He convicts you, you're quick to repent. If somebody else has to bust you out, then you're not really remorseful. You're not really... Repentance means to change. Turn turn 180 degrees in the opposite direction from what you were heading. That is what the word means in the, in the Hebrew. Okay? And in the Greek, actually. Both translations. And so, quick to forgive. That is something that God loves. That is something that shows His heart. Another word is submitted. And today, if you want to get to... Most people will let you talk about it, just don't expect them to do it. You know, you can have marriage counsel with someone and talk about being submitted. And I'm not talking about an ogre. I'm not talking about a dictator. But being submitted to one another means that, that, that you, it means that you're in submission. They're, they're, if I wasn't submitted to Jesus, then I would just be taking his advice when it suited me. How many of you know it's all in? We choose to make Him Lord of our life. That means He is over us. And how I many there's lots of things that God calls us to be submitted to? That is something God loves because it shows somebody that's after His heart. Those were all free tonight. Those respect, honor, integrity, compassion, empathy, love, loyalty, confidence. I miss loyalty. How many of you know Jesus likes people that are loyal? I can prove that in the Word, but we can move on. He got pretty upset with them when the three fell asleep on him, didn't he? A confidant means someone that you can talk to that you know is going no further. You have the 100% confidence in them and what, they're, what you're speaking with them, what they're saying to you. And let me tell you, finding a true confidant today is almost impossible. But they are out there. God expects it as something God loves because the opposite is a tailbearer. And God hates a tailbearer. But He's asking us to be confidants. People that when they speak to us, it's clammed up. It goes no more. We're praying about it. We're not judging. We're, we may judge to get to the root of the thing to get them set free and delivered. 
but then we're walking in love with them, we're having empathy on them after we've done that, and you'll, they'll never hear about it from some other source. And if they're going to talk about it, they're going to get our permission and let us know straight up when they tell us that, hey, this is something I have to talk about with somebody else. So we can see by the things God hates, the things that God loves. And a confidant is one of those things. But how many of you know, a lot of people will listen, but a confidant is someone that cares what you're saying. And they can tell that by how much attention they give you whenever you start to speak and open your heart. Amen. So, now we're going to... Uh, read some of our translations here that we're going to dig in. I'm going to start with verse 1. These six things doeth the Lord hate. Now, everybody look at your neighbor and say, he really said hate. He really said hate. Yeah. Seven are an abomination unto him. You know an abomination is something you're going to see as we read through here is something that they is detestable lows. Makes him want to throw up in his mouth. Do you want to do something that makes God want to throw up in His mouth? And if it's that big a deal to God, how many think that we, we should be studying it? So for, a lot of people say, well, man, these are just things, these are, these are rough. Well, if I know them, I'm sure not going to fall into them. At least that should be my heart. I, I sure want to make sure I never... I'm doing something that God hates and I sure never want to make Him throw up in His mouth. Amen? There's probably a reason most people aren't here tonight. They see the subject title and said, I ain't going there. <laughs> yeah, I said it. You're watching. The Lord convict you in Jesus' name. No, maybe not, not all of them. There is a few of them. The Lord hates six things. In fact, seven are detestable to Him. Here are six things God hates and one more that He loathes with a passion. Does anybody want to do something that God loathes with a passion? Does that sound like a good idea to live a blessed life? We're studying Proverbs. It's a book of wisdom. So it's all about a road map to either blessings or curses, life or death. He's saying this is some definite way to get in bad light with the Lord. Amen. And so then we go on. Six, there are six things which Jehovah hateth, yet seven which are an abomination unto him. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. I'm going to jump on to the last one. There are seven things that the Lord hateth and cannot tolerate. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that kill innocent blood, a mind that thinks up wicked plans, feet that hurry off to do evil, a witness who tells one lie after another, and someone who stirs up trouble. And I would like to say that most of these are found all just in the world, but I want to tell you that someone stirs up trouble among friends. That's what, that these are also alive and well sometimes and amongst in the church because the enemy really likes to work them there. We just need to make sure we have no part of them. it. You know, there are certain things, you know, we talk about, but when it's something God hates, there's an abomination, you want to make sure you're as, that when it's going on, that you are nowhere near connected or associated with that at all. <coughs> well, where's that at in the scripture? Well, I read somewhere that bad company corrupts good character. And if they're doing things that God hates, and that he detests, and that makes him want to throw up in his mouth, and that is going to corrupt your, that's going to get on you according to the Word of God, and you're not dealing with it, you're not calling it out, because once you call it out, they're probably not going to want to talk to you about that subject no more anyways, is what I found. They don't come back, but you don't want to have nothing to do with that unless you're doing those things, amen? Verse 17 says, a proud look, a lying tongue, heads, hands, heads, hands that shed innocent blood, arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, head, hands that shed innocent blood, 
eyes that are arrogant, a tongue that lies, hands that murder the innocent, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Same thing again. I'm so glad I'm not the only one that can't stand a liar. In my family, if you lie to me, it's an automatic spanking. Unless you're Pastor Tammy, then God gets to give the spanking. And she doesn't lie to me. So that was supposed to be a joke. But the kids do get spankings. Isaiah's up here frowning. He's like, I do not want to talk about this, Dad. <laughs> this is not a good subject. And so, after reading that, if you can uh, look at your sheets I've given you for tonight, our work, our work sheets, it says, These six things do the Lord hate, the seven is an abominable thing. And it's a catalog of evils, especially odious to the infinite one. One is haughty, bearing a proud look. Pride is frequently represented in the Bible as an offense to God. Haughtiness is an abomination because it implies self-ignorance, unkindness, and irreverence. So, how many times do you see irreverence today in the body of the Christ in the world around you? How many people just totally treat God's people, God Himself, His church, with irreverence? How many times do they are they unkind, just don't even... Well, a proud look, I mean, to break that down into modern day terms, that's looking at like, do whatever you want, I know better. And I would say in every sermon I've preached in the last 25 years, I've had at least one of those people, at the very least, in every, every congregation I've ever preached in. At the very least. I've had someone sitting there with a proud look staring back at me. Every single time. Now, what would be the opposite of that? Well, I mean, I'm not looking for exacts, but in your heart, what would be the opposite of a proud look? Submitted. Compassion. Empathy. There's more than one. But do you see how, what's that? Humble. Humble. Self ignorance. I like that description because they think they know more than what they actually do. That's the one, your number one there. You ever met somebody that thinks they've got it all figured out and they don't even, they don't even know how to put two plus two together in the subject you're talking about? And you're trying to slow it down so you can give it to them? You ever met somebody? I mean, they don't even know they're ignorant, but they're, they're, they've made themselves self-ignorant because they refuse to listen. They think they already have it all figured out. That is the number one thing. That's not the number one thing. That is the first thing that God hates. Now look, I didn't write this scripture. I didn't put it in the Word of God. I didn't decide what these were. But this is what the Word of God says. I mean, it's the only time in the Bible that God, well, He talks about homosexuality being an abomination and a couple other things, but it's the only time He gives out a whole list of things that He hates. So we should pay very close attention. Amen? Number two, a verbal falsehood, a lying tongue. Anybody here like to be lied to? What happens after somebody lies to you? It breaks your trust. Any other things that happen? That's my number one thing. Once you've, once you've lied to me, now I have learned to trust people again. You want to know how I do it? Because I can trust God. And when God starts working on people, He can change who they are, what they were, and I can slowly rebuild that with them. Now before Christ, before I let God have a deep work inside me, that didn't come easily to me. Once you used to, you know, I, I had rules. And once you broke my trust, there was no way back in. You were simply non-existent to me. I'm so thankful that God's restored me and worked on me so that I can... Yeah, but so, falsehood always implies a wrong heart. 
How many know when someone they're, they're, the, when somebody's lying, it don't take a rocket science to figure out that their heart is all jacked up. A pure heart, see, supplies no motive for falsehood. See, when you're telling the truth, you don't have to worry about what you're saying. You don't even have to remember what you said. Vanity, arrogance, ambition, cowardice are the parents and patriots of lies, patrons of lies. So, you know, a lot of people, they lie to get ahead. They lie because they're trying to get out of trouble. I, is any, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my mom tried to beat this into me, you know, that uh, lying was never, it was always going to make things worse. And she always did her best to prove that point with a singing hickory switch. You know, if uh, that, but a lot of times people are too coward to face the truth or the situation or what they what they think is going to come, and the enemy convinces them to lie and try to cover it up. And all it does is take them out of the side the grace of God and actually puts them in the place where all those things they were afraid of could not happen to them. Falsehood always has a bad social tendency. It disappoints expectations, shakes confidences, confidences, confidence, loosens the very foundations of social order. Does anybody like to be around a liar? Do you like to work with a liar? How about slick liars? You ever been around a slick liar? You ever been around someone with a golden tongue? I mean, they can they can spin it so fast you don't even. By the time they get done with one, they can spin another one. They can spin another one. And there's just enough truth in it to make you wonder if what they're saying is true or not. Do you know that's a spiritual thing? The same way God hates it, there's a spirit that actually when people open up enough that if they're not saved and set apart, I've seen people that operate in that. I mean, they can spin it with the best of them. They, and some of them work in cell phone stores and car spots and... <laughs> And they work for AT and T. Spent five hours on the phone Saturday. And I didn't tell them that God hated them. But don't do that. Because God loves them. Here, here's the thing. Also, I want to point this out. This is all joking aside. God didn't say He hated this person. He said He hated these spirits, these these sins, these things. These things he hates. He never hates the... He always loves the person, but these things keep him from being able to minister and have a relationship with that person. Amen? Just like I was joking, but he, he loved those, but he sure hated that lie. Amen? So, Heartless cruelty, hands that shed innocent blood. And I've, I spoke on this in depth, different thing, but cruelty implies an utter lack of sympathy with God's creatures, whether it be man, woman, dog, whatever it is, heartless cruelty. You ever, and, and this means someone that has no empathy, someone that has no compassion. You know, they can... They are, and here's what I found about a lot of these people when this thing is present. As long as you're doing it all the way that they want you to, they're your best bud, they love you, you're great. But the first time that you cross them, and you don't even probably know that you've done it, all those emotions are shut off and you are now dead to them. And we can, and then they become what we call ruthless. And these are things that God hates. Amen. Another one for this, as you can see, is an utter lack of sympathy with God's mind. Now, how many know people have sympathy, but how many know, and, and these people do have sympathy, but they only have sympathy for things that they care about or what attain to them. There's a difference between having that kind of sympathy and having God's sympathy. Having the kind of sympathy that moves God's heart. Amen? Because there was a long time ago that, you know, it bugged me how certain people acted. Or they even might be uh, doing these traits. And I said, Lord, I said, I need you to have your heart for these people. I need you to show me, give me your eyes to show me these people so I can see them through your eyes. And it was amazing because all of a sudden I could see why they did a lot of the stuff they did. It didn't make it okay. It didn't. They still had to repent and turn from it. But it gave me sympathy for them. 
Because I can then see them through God's eyes. Amen? It says, He who inflicts pain is out of sympathy both with the universe and with his Maker. And so, can you get much plainer than that? You ever seen somebody that, man, I mean, they are the most vindictive person upon the face of the earth? That's usually something that God hates. There's something in there. Are y'all getting this? Is this clicking with everyone? I got one or two. Number verse 18. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. A heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil. A heart that hatches evil plots, feet that race down a wicked track. A heart that devises wicked purposes, feet that are swift to be run, running into mischief. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil. A heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are swift in running to mischief. Mischief, vicious scheming. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. There are some hearts so bad that they are ever inventing some evil thing illustrated by, I can't pronounce this word I've got here right now, man, which means someone that's just a corrupt man, someone who's just given fully over to the darkness. And so, do you ever meet somebody that they are just constantly coming up with perverted things, corrupt things, evil things? Their mind is constantly set upon them. Well, God hates those people. They've given fully into it. I'm so glad that God can deliver us from any of these things. Amen? Mischievous eagerness. Feet swift and running to mischief. They, know only do, they not only do mischief, but they do it eagerly with readily villages. They have a greed for it. Not only... Do they like stirring up mischief and trouble? And You know, a lot of people just say, well, I'm just having good fun. Well, you know what? There used to be a lot of people say that around here, but over the 10 years of being a pastor here, it'll be 10 years this August, I really nipped that in the bud. Because, no, you were tearing someone else down to build yourself up, and you run eagerly to it because that was what was in your heart to do. And you'll see that people readily do this and there's people that they, they, they just run for it. Or when it's just, well, it was all in good fun. No, there was no good fun had in there. You did not build someone up. You did not edify someone. You did not encourage them. And you sure weren't in a place of authority to correct them. Amen? And so you can, there is much more to this, but how many can see that there's lots of people have feet that are swifter. In other words, also, someone can just start a little mischief over here and they don't need any encouragement. As soon as it starts, they're headed straight for it. You'll always find them in the center of whatever mess there may be going on around. Big smile. Amen? Do you see that? And guess what? God hates that. We should be resistant to those things. I didn't say we constantly that they have no effect. We, we should res be... We should resist all those types of motives and actions. Social slander. Oh, verse 19. We need to read it. A false witness that speaketh lies. Has anybody ever been lied on? Are things misquoted, mistreated, misconstrued? I could go on and on. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. By the way, if you're wondering which one makes God want to throw up in His mouth, it's the one that's sowing discord among the brethren. That's the body of Christ. Anything that causes disunity is discord. And God wants to throw up His mouth. He just hates that. And the devil works overtime to accomplish it. But... A lying witness who gives false testimony who stirs up trouble among brothers. A mouth that lies under oath, a troublemaker in the family. Anybody ever had a... We used to call them pot stirs. 
you know, they want to get all that junk off the bottom and get it for everybody else to eat. Just because that's where they're at on the bottom. That's how they feel. A mouth that lies under oath. I've had a lot of people, they look me in the eye, you know, and they lie to me, and just because I don't bust them out right away, they think they got away with it. It's pretty amazing. My kids try it sometimes. Pastor Tammy and Isaiah's even told him, you know, what, what are you doing? He knows. Just, just tell him. Just tell him. Tell him the truth. Get it over with. You said that before, haven't you? Daddy knows. You don't remember? All right. You told Nehemiah that once. A false, yeah. A false witness who breathes out lies a one who sows discord among brothers. A false witness who utters lies he who sows discord among brothers. Now, what's the difference between lying and a lying witness? Anybody? Before we get started? What's that? All good and wrong answers. I'm just loping up before we study it. Anybody else want to take a shot? All right. If you look here, it's going to sum up. A social slander. A false witness that speak lies. That means they liars just lie about everything. There is people that literally go around trying to rob everyone else and tear down everyone else's character and integrity instead of fixing their own. And that is someone that has a false that has a, bears a false witness and speaketh lies. Because instead of fixing their own character and integrity, they try to assassinate everybody else's. Does everybody see that? Social slander. The slander is amongst the greatest of social curses. He robs his fellow creature of his greatest treasure, his own reputation, and the loving confidence of his friends. Because, see, if someone doesn't really have a strong walk with God, I've had people that that they've heard things about me, and now you couldn't convince them otherwise, but at the time they didn't believe them, but that seed was planted, and they had to deal with that seed for many years until the other stuff outgrew it enough to push it out of the way. And that was from someone that was going around doing being social slander. They didn't... And here's the thing. Uh, this is free, by the way. For one, you shouldn't ever be listening to anybody else unless they've already talked to the other person. You shouldn't be hearing about anybody else unless it's an uplifting way. But if someone's really that concerned... Uh, why would you receive anything about somebody else's character whose own character isn't lined up with the Word of God? And that really just stop you from seeing. Because I've had a few brothers in the Lord that just that they've never trash talked a person. They just say, "Hey, hey, brother, we love you." Right now, God's working on that person. It would probably do big do you some good just to give them a wide berth for a little bit. They didn't tell me not to hang out with them. They didn't help. And when they, they knew that I would know when they were God was done working with them. But they also didn't want me to maybe have that person come in here and put stuff into you all that would have been damaging. That wouldn't have been right, would it? If they had known. So, uh, social slander. Has anybody here experienced social slander? Does everybody... Listen, do you realize that's something God hates? Is that like coarse jesting? Um, no, that's different. Coarse jesting goes along with mischievous, <laughs> ignorant, vicious scheming, scheming, ultra lack of sympathy. It goes along with all that. There can be social slander. That it, it, social slander that can go into court jesting when people start bearing falsehoods through that. Do you see what I'm saying? It can fall into that. Yes, it, it can. So, disturbing strife. Anybody here like strife? Anybody like being around people that stir strife? 
Has anybody ever stirred strife and didn't realize you were doing it until God got a hold of you and you're like, man, I don't want no more of that. Good, I'm not the only one. If you haven't experienced that yet, just know that you will. <laughs> he that soweth discord among brethren, he who by tale-bearing ill-natured stories and wicked inventions produces the disruptions of friendships is apparent to the God who desires His creatures to live in love and unity. Listen, tale-bearing, ill-natured stories, wicked inventions. There's people that ain't happy and they don't want nobody else happy. There's also people that are envious of what other people have and instead of trying to change, let God change them, they try to tear it down. Or there's people that the enemy has told them that they don't fit in, they're not good enough, everybody, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, and I'm going to go eat worms. And so then they buy into all of that and then they end up stirring discord because they believe the lies of the enemy instead of the promises of God. And I've seen all of that. I've seen a lot. And I'm not even touched on all the aspects of this. I, I've seen the enemy <laughs> use almost every aspect, everything to stir disunity in the body. This is something that God hates. This is something He actually loathes with a passion. Anything that would separate you from Him or separate you from the, the godly people that counsel in your life or the pastor, the church, He literally loathes that. And I believe He comes out with all guns blazing. And I believe people put themselves in a very negative place because of it. Amen. And I will also say it's always easy to find somebody else that has these traits or had these traits, but it's always best if we first find them in ourselves or, or be aware of them in ourselves instead of everybody else. Amen. Because even being your pastor, guess what? I can't control you. And you can't control me. But I can control Brian, and he's enough of a handful on his own. Amen? You don't have to shout me down on that one. So, the moral hideousness of the world, these seven evils everywhere abound. The immaculate purity of God, he hates these things, therefore they are foreign to himself. The true mission of the godly is to endeavor to rid the world of the offenses to heaven. So if we walk in the first traits that I talked about, you know, being submitted, loyal, what else did I say? Anybody? What? Respect? Honor, integrity? What? Compassion? What? Love? Quick to forgive? Submitted? Empathy. Then we will help rid the things that, that God hates. Do you all see that tonight? All right. Um, we're going to open up for thoughts and questions. What you got from it. Well, yeah, I, how many scriptures did I cover tonight? Four. Four scriptures. Look at that, man. I'm on roll. Sister Heather. Well, I found out what the difference between a liar and a lying witness was. I thought they were the same, or I wasn't really sure what the difference was. Amen. Good stuff. Somebody else, what did you get from tonight? Sister Rebecca. Amen. How many know knows that I founded another ministry many years ago that's still going on throughout the world? Do you all know that? It's called Spirit Riders Motorcycle Ministry. And in our bylaws, when someone gets a patch, that's one of the things that they take an oath to is not stir, stirring discord among the brethren. Because there's nothing that will destroy a body faster than disunity. Because it's where unity is that God commands the blessing. 
It's where unity is where people get filled with the Holy Ghost and established. It's with disunity that brings all of the other things you don't want on a body. Somebody else tonight. Sister Sean. Amen. Best to believe what God says about us. Amen. And sometimes I admit that takes effort. I have to renew my mind to do that. Sister Heather. Instead of working on themselves, or try to obscure why false witnesses and stuff against the other person. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And a lot of times it'll be the very thing that they're liking in that they attack somebody else in. They'll find it in another person. Did you have your hand up, Pastor Tanner? Um, Amen. Amen. And how many were there? How many fruits of the Spirit are there? Oh, how'd that happen? Somebody else tonight. I'm about to I'm about to go into military mode. Sister Becky always loves it, I can tell. Sister Deb. much more, and I'll throw this out there, we live in a very, you know, Facebook is a what? Social app. And, <laughs> yeah, it's a gossip. But, uh, so, social slander is taking place in, in a more, I think something that God hates is taking, ra taking place at a more rapid rate than it ever has before. Because and we're we're supposedly such a social society, but most people don't ever get to know one another before they pass on what they think about one another. Amen. Sister Rachel. to be judged. Yeah. Good stuff. Sister Becky Gleason. I can't hear anything everybody else said, so if I say it again, I'm sorry. That's all right. We just want to hear what you got. <laughs> but causing this work makes God want to throw up in his mouth. Amen. And I'll tell you, since I first got that revelation so many years ago, it's just been a, it was something got so stuck in my heart. I mean, it's the only time in the Bible he says that that I just decided I would never be a part of that, I would never have that in my ministry, and I would do my best to keep others from falling trapped to it. Because if it's something God takes so serious, I felt like it was something I should take serious. Amen. Sister Joyce. Uh, even though I've had things done to me, I still pray for them, and I pray to God, and you freak down and touch them, and that they'll want to change their life around. Amen. Brother Jason, you got anything you want to impart that you got from our study tonight? All right. I hear you. I have a question. All right. I'm going to just line one. If you're a news reporter, you know the news report's not true. It's still a Well, it. Slandering politics. Yeah, I mean, so does God hate those things? Yes. Does, are they Christians? I'd probably say not, because the fruit of them would not. I hard to. I've only probably met two in the whole 
journalistic society in my life that were actual true Christians. I've met a lot of people that uh, profess to be, but you know, the Bible says we'll know them by their fruits, and I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying their fruit was not that. So, you know, it'd be really good for them to listen to this uh, teaching, wouldn't it, to realize it's something God hates, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, but you know, just like all that stuff, they've made, the, and the enemy's done on purpose, we don't know what the truth is, because they are all so bad, twisted it up every which way, that we just got to follow after the Lord. Yeah. As long as the video's not been doctored, edited, or added to, or no, done. Oh, I know. I was even meeting mean the 10 minute one today. Society, they they do some all kinds of things. But God can give us the truth and show us. That's just like a Benghazi was a horrible thing. But I was the first person across the, the world, not making it about me, but God showed me that they first told me, if you remember, they tried saying it was this video that. Christian video, that was the reason why it happened, and I was the first one that, because God spoke to me, so I could boldly say that was a lie, and I got attacked from all over, and we, I prayed, and it wasn't within the next few days that the truth came out, but that had nothing to do with it, and so I found that the best person to get my news source from is the Holy Ghost, because He can tell us the truth, regardless of what the media says, and He's done that for me in several times. Anybody else tonight, or anything you want to put in that you got? Anything that's going to help you be a better believer? Anybody? Huh? Sister, sister head. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. What did you say, Pastor Tammy? All right, Pastor Tammy, will you just come and lead us? Up? We're going to pray for the family unit. Did you have something you wanted to say? Don't believe the lies of the devil. She's going to come and lead us in prayer for our family unit, uh, for our church, and church finances and things, and members of our church. If you look around, we're missing a few. And uh, you can play that. We're going to wrap it up pretty quickly tonight. So thank you all.